In this video, we are going to be talking about the first measure of dispersion, the index of qualitative variance. Measures of dispersion overall are a type of statistic that shows us how tightly packed or on the other hand how spread out the respondents are in relation to one or more measures of central tendency. In other words, it allows us to understand the variability in the distribution. So it allows us to see how homogeneous or heterogeneous our distribution is. In other words, how similar are our respondents or how varied are they or how different are our respondents. So when we're looking at a sample, um, we can use measures of dispersion to help us to understand that variability and that spread of the distribution. So we've already talked about measures of central tendency, which tell us the center point of the data. Now we're looking at um, how far out from the center are the data spread. And so that's what our measures of dispersion help us to, to find out. Our first measure of dispersion that we're going to talk about is called the Index of Qualitative Variance, or IQV, um, Index of Qualitative Variance. So the IQV is used with nominal level variables to tell us how much variability there is. And the index of qualitative variance is a range. So when you calculate IQV, you're going to get a number that ranges from 0 to 1. So 0 means that there is, it's a, everyone scored the same. Everyone had the same answer on the survey. Um, there is no variability, no variation in responses. But if you have a 1, it means that you have a very heterogeneous distribution, that on your survey, the people in your sample answered very differently. Um, and so they're evenly distributed amongst the different categories of the variable. So you can have a score that ranges anywhere in between. Uh, the closer to 1, the more heterogeneous. The closer to 0, the more homogeneous. So to find the IQV, we have an equation. Um, and our equation is really the total observed differences in the distribution divided by the maximum possible differences. So what we're looking for is um, how much variation is there as compared to how much variation there could be. So we're looking at what is as compared to kind of the most variation there could possibly be. So we're going to divide our equation into two parts. We're going to divide it into the um, numerator and denominator. So for the numerator, the top portion of this equation, we have the total observed differences. And our equation for that is going to be the sum. So remember that the sigma means to sum or to add up what comes behind it. And we have this symbol, f of i times f of j. And what this is talking about, f of i is the frequency of the first category multiplied by f of j, the frequency of the categories that come after it. This will make more sense and be clear as we do an example. The bottom part of our equation is the maximum possible differences. How many differences can there be in our data? And so we have our equation here, k times k minus 1 divided by 2 times n over k squared. Here, k, k represents number of categories, and n, of course, represents total number of respondents. And so once we know those, we can just plug those in and solve um, for the maximum possible differences. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example. All right, so to calculate the index of qualitative variance, or IQV, um, we are going to start with our equation. So our equation, IQV, equals the sum of the F of I, F of J, divided by K, times k minus 1 over 2 times n over k 
squared. So that's a full equation. That is the total differences divided by the maximum possible differences. Now to make it easier to solve, I'm going to go ahead and divide this in half. And so I'm going to solve the first part of the equation first. So I'm going to do my sum of the f of i, f of j. And so this f of i, f of j is referring to the um, frequencies. And so f of i is the frequency of a given category, and f of j is the frequency of the categories that come after that. So for the first category, for the category Protestant, um, we have a frequency of 39, and we're going to multiply that, f of i, which is 39, times f of j, which is the frequency of all of the other categories. So that's going to be 24 for the Catholics, plus 6 for those who are Jewish, plus 14 for those who are other, plus 12 for those who are none. And that's going to give us 39 times 56, which is 2184. Now, we have a sum of the f of i, f of j. So we're going to want to do this and repeat this for each of our categories. So we're also going to have for the category Catholic, the frequency is 24, and we're multiplying that by the frequency of the categories that come after it. So it's going to be 6 for Jewish, plus 14 for other, plus 12 for none. And that's going to give us 24 times 32, which is 700 and 68. So then we go to our next category, which is going to be Jewish. And we have six people in that category. And we multiply that by the f of j, the sum of, or the, the frequency of the categories after it, so 14 plus 12. So we get 6 times 26 equals 156. And then for our last uh, equation, we're going to have the sum of the other category, the frequency of the other category, 14, times f of j, which is going to be 12 for none. And that's going to give us 168. So the um, sum of the f of i, f of j, is when you take the frequency of the category and multiply it by the frequencies of the categories that come after it, and then do that um, for each of our categories, and then we're going to sum those up. We're going to add up all four of these numbers. So I'm just going to draw a nice little line down here, and I'm going to have my sum of the f of i, f of j, is going to be equal to 2184 plus 768 plus 156 plus 168 is going to give me 3200 and 76. So that's the top of my equation. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back in up here as 3276. And now I just need to solve for the bottom portion of my equation. So the maximum possible differences is calculated by taking k times k minus 1 divided by 2 times n over k squared. Now remember, k stands for the number of categories, so in this case we have five categories. So 5 times 5 minus 1 divided by 2 times, and n is our total number of respondents, which is 95, over k, which is 5 squared. So we're going to have um, 5 times 4 over 2 times 19 squared, which is going to be 20 over 2 times 361, which equals 10 times 361, which equals 3,610. So from here, all I did was start to kind of work it out one step at a time. You need to show each of these steps in the process. That way, if you do make a mistake in your calculation, uh, if you miss order of operations somewhere, I can see where you're going wrong and help you to correct the mistake. So I'm going to take that 361 and I'm going to plug it back in up here to the bottom part of our equation. 
so that we have our total observed differences divided by our um, maximum possible differences, and that's going to give us 0 0.91 when we round to two decimal places. As you are calculating your IQV, there are a couple of hints and things that you can look for that will tell you if you have done something wrong or if you're on the right track. The first is that you have to remember that the IQV must be between 0 and 1, which means that your total observed differences have to be less than the maximum possible differences. Um, and so if you find that you're, you're getting a number that's a negative or is above 1, there's a mistake somewhere along your process, and you need to go back and correct that mistake. Also remember that n is always the total number of cases, and k is the number of categories. Also make sure not to include total as a category. And also, if you're looking at a frequency distribution from SPSS, make sure that you keep in mind that the, we're only looking at valid categories. We're not including the don't knows and missings um, and not applicables in our calculation of the IQV. So use the total of valid cases, not the total total. All right, and so now let's talk about how we would interpret this. So we would interpret the IQV um, by saying something like this. The IQV is 0.91, which indicates that the distribution is very heterogeneous. There is a lot of variation in replies to the, to the question, what is your religious affiliation? Does this fit the distribution? If we think back to what our distribution looks like, it seems to fit fairly well. Um, it's not completely heterogeneous because you have more Protestants than any other category, but every category has um, a good representation. So I would say that it is, in fact, a heterogeneous distribution.